Hey everybody, it's Brandon again. Today we are looking at something called Jing OS. I got a request on the channel to review this thing. Oh, it's been a few weeks now, and I'm just now getting to it. I was uh, kind of reluctant to take a look at this because I'm probably gonna have to say some bad things about it, and I don't like being negative. But here we are. We're looking at it. <clears throat> this is Jing OS version 0.9 which is the latest version you can get for x86 CPUs. They also have a ARM processor edition, which um, I don't have an ARM device to test that out. Although it might work on a Raspberry Pi, I can't confirm that. And it has a newer version, and the ARM version supposedly also supports Android apps, which would be kind of a changer for this thing. This x86 version does not have Android support, and... Um, from what I can tell, it's built off of Ubuntu using a KDE, a heavily skinned KDE Plasma desktop here. So let's take a look at it. They kind of build it as being a uh, mobile in, a mobile Linux distribution styled after the iPad. And as you can see, that's exactly what it is. This is the uh, desktop you get to when you first... Well, before I get to even that, <clears throat> this was the hardest Linux distribution I've ever had to download. Not only did I have to, you know, put my email in first to get the download link, that's not a big deal. But then the download failed on me four times before I finally got it to go through. I don't know what the deal is. Maybe their servers are just bad today. That's neither here nor there. Also, installing it, when you put in the, uh, li when you boot it from the live CD or the live ISO, it asks you for a, to enter your PIN right off the bat. And I didn't see anywhere where they told you what the PIN is. So I tried a few and I finally guessed it. If you're trying this out, the uh, pin is one, two, three, four, five, six. Incidentally, the same pin that I use on my luggage. But so that's what it is. And then after you install it, it um, asks for the pin again. You put it in, then it lets you change the pin. But in order to change the pin, you have to put in the password. And I don't know what the password was. I failed at guessing that one. So I still have one, two, three, four, five, six as the pin. I don't know how to get past that. So that's the first gripe. But now let's look at the system itself. This is what you're presented with after you install it. This is our main screen. And everything is kind of done with gestures. So this is obviously made for a touch screen. I wouldn't recommend using this on a laptop or a desktop unless they make some big changes to the interface. And you can't really use it with just a mouse. You gotta have a touchpad because some things require like a three finger gesture, which you just can't do with the mouse. But if you go up to the uh, the clock here and drag down, you kind of get the controls menu, wireless, Bluetooth, airplane mode, all this stuff. As you can see, very much tailored for a mobile experience. Just quick jump to the settings app. And this is <laughs> the first thing I noticed because I was trying to use a mouse originally. In order to close an app, you have to put three fingers on the trackpad and swipe up from the bottom. It took me forever just to figure out how to close an app. Okay, if you scroll down on this side, you get the uh, notification center. It's reasonable looking. Let's go ahead and uh, it comes with these office apps, WPS. And I think we talked about WPS Office on the channel before. But this is obviously the Chinese edition of it. And um, so unfortunately, I can't read anything of what it's saying. And, you know, to me, that's, that's an issue. So I'm going to close out of that. It comes with the... Ungoogled Chromium web browser, which is nice. We got a camera app. We'll check that out. Oh, here's me. Take a picture. There we go. We got a picture, so that seems to work. I bet under me there's a video option. Yeah, we can switch to video. It's all pretty basic stuff. You can switch cameras, so it's obviously made for a tablet device, which is at multiple cameras. I'll close that. We also got the Photos app. As you can see, just look at these applications. They're very uh, mobile tailored. You, can, you have to swipe to uh, quit out of things. Here we got K Sysguard. I guess it's like a task manager, the KDE task manager. We'll go ahead and quit out of that. I'm not going to open these other WPS programs, but here we got a calculator. I wonder if you can pin things to the side. Maybe. Not that I can tell. It might be easier if you actually had a touch screen. It's kind of hard to do it with the trackpad. What was that? The calculator. We got a clock. Very much a uh, mobile looking clock application. I mean, it looks nice. I'll give it that. 
Let's see what our calendar looks like here. Again, a nice looking calendar. I have no problem with it. It's just, uh, it's not that useful for a laptop or a desktop. Then the file manager app, we'll take a look at that. <clears throat> and this actually doesn't look bad. You can see a lot of the folders have Chinese names, so I don't know what they are. That's no big deal. But, um, you know, you compare this to the file browser that comes on a regular mobile device. It's no better or no worse. Um, except clicking on these things doesn't do anything. So that's worse. I'm going to close out of that. Kind of swipe these things away here. As I said, the interface is just really hard to use <laughs> without a touch screen. Let's see what their media player looks like. I mean, it's nice. I mean, on a tablet, it looks nice. Um, they have videos on their channel of them running this on a Surface Pro, so maybe that's kind of the target device for this. I don't have a Surface Pro sit around. The system settings goes to the KDE system settings. I'm going to not go through that. Then we have voice memos. The icon, I think, kind of looks like the iPhone voice memos. Hello, hello, hello. All right. I don't hear anything. I'm going to close that. And here, this is their uh, app center, their app store, where they kind of have some... But then again, like it's hard to click on things. Let's see if it loads anything for us. All right, so there's not much in it. I mean, they have categories with no apps. So I'm going to close that. And then, finally, you got your terminal. And as I said, I think, I mean, if I know the password, maybe we can install something. Try uh, sudo apt install. Let's try Inkscape. I always try Inkscape. Oh, I don't know the password. Maybe it's one, two, three, four, five, six. I guess so. Don't know what half that says, but we'll find out. So there we go. We just learned something. If you want to change the pen and it asks for the password, the password is also one, two, three, four, five, six. Good to know. Yeah, so this is all obviously using the Ubuntu servers here. I'd just be interested to see how a uh, regular desktop app like Inkscape looks on this thing. Let me just give it a minute. So, yeah, on a tablet, this would be cool. Um, of course, on an x86 tablet, like if you're trying to put this on your old Surface, without Android support, I don't know how much mileage you're going to get really out of this because how many Linux applications, other than the stuff bundled with the... Uh, system here which isn't that much um, they're not going to be optimized for touch at all I'm, I'm expecting let's just see I'm expecting things to be really small and hard to click on yeah okay I mean obviously I can't click on any of the menus and I can't read them I mean if you're in China this is great for me, not so much. Yeah, the UI is just unresponsive here. Oh, here we go. Well, some buttons are, some aren't. I don't get it. I don't get it, you guys. I'm going to close that. So anyway, this is Jing OS. Um, I, I mean, I'm not anti it. It looks nice, I think. It would be cool if... It was in English, and I had a tablet. And maybe there is an English version out there somewhere that I just don't know about or I was too dumb to download. I'm not sure. Uh, they also, I know they sell their own tablet. It's called the Jing Pad or something of that nature, and it comes with this, and it's an ARM-based. They touted it as, like, the first Linux ARM-based tablet. And maybe it's good. You can uh, find some reviews for it online. Me, I wouldn't use this for a uh, laptop or a desktop personally. But uh, you might, and that's cool. Um... But I'm, since somebody wanted me to check it out, I uh, that's why I'm checking it out. I hope uh, you guys learned something from this. If there's something I missed, you can let me know in the comments. Or um, if there's something I'm just too dumb to realize, let me know that too. Subscribe to the channel if you like. Like the video. And uh, until next time.
I hope you all have a good day. Bye now.